Hello everyone, uh, this is John Bridekirk and I'm here today to present the following article which is called Longitudinal Associations Between Exercise Identity and Exercise Motivation, a Multi-Level Growth Curve Model Approach. The primary reason I selected this article is for the analysis that they used, Multi-Level Growth Curve Modeling. It's a form of analysis being covered in the course and I want to take an opportunity to look at an article that used this form of analysis. So to begin, uh, the article talks about two types of uh, forms of um, ways people identify with exercising, either exercise identity and exercise motivation. And the idea here is there's a lot of literature on both of these topics to suggest that both of them in combination can really increase physical activity amongst individuals. Currently, the literature has been purely cross-sectional on this phenomenon. When they're studying exercise identity and exercise motivation, it's been cross-sectional. They're looking at groups and comparing these groups at the same time. The selling feature of the article that I'm currently reviewing is that it's one of the first times it's being used in a longitudinal style, and they're looking at really how exercise identity and motivation can change over time. So what is exercise identity? What is exercise motivation? Pretty much exercise identity is how much one comes to identify with exercising. For example, they may term themselves an exerciser, a gym goer, a recreational lifter. They may also term themselves as an athlete or someone who takes part in physical activity. That is them identifying with exercising. On the other hand, motivation is the various reasons why someone might take part in exercising. They may have certain goals in mind, um, but they might just see it for the pure enjoyment of the activity. Uh, but the idea is there's some sort of motivation to engage in exercising. And of course, with the literature, there's different types of motivation that have been constructed. We have adaptive forms of motivation and we have non-adaptive forms of motivation. Adaptive forms of motivation pretty much suggest individuals take part in these activities due to the pure enjoyment and satisfaction the activities provide. They like the activity, they enjoy taking part of the, in the activity, and they just take part in the activity for the sake of the activity itself. Um, on the other hand, non-adaptive forms of motivation um, don't necessarily come with the enjoyment that adaptive forms of motivation do. For example, an individual who has a non-adaptive form of motivation may have some sort of external pressure to take part in the activity. They don't necessarily want to engage in the activity, but they feel the reason they, there's many reasons why they should. So in some cases, they can have an external pressure or just be completely not motivated to do the activity at all. In the following uh, study, they uh, use two different types of identity um, to measure identity really. So we have exercise beliefs and role identity. Exercise beliefs is pretty much uh, what types of beliefs the individual has about exercising. And then the role identity is how the individual comes to identify with the activity itself. And of course, as I was previously mentioning, what the literature is showing is that higher forms of exercise identity in combination with certain adaptive forms of motivation should overall be increasing physical activity. And that is where the research question comes into mind. They want to look at how these two things in conjunction can change over time. So the research questions are number one, what is the reciprocal link between exercise motivation and identity? Pretty much saying that if exercise motivation increases, does exercise identity also increase? Or on the other hand, if exercise identity decreases, does that mean exercise motivation also decreases? And then, uh, and then their other question is how do these things differ across individuals? For example, if an individual is not motivated to gauge in exercise, but later finds that type of motivation, will their exercise identity increase? Or on the other hand, if the individual has a high form of exercise identity, does their motivation over time change?
And of course, this is how the hypotheses have been structured within this study. We have the between subject hypotheses looking at this reciprocal link. And then we have the within subject hypotheses looking at how individuals vary over time. So of course, I was mentioning this is a longitudinal study. They measured individuals at three times over a six month period, measured once in January, March, and June, and collected 180 participants from fellow um, fitness centers and recreational community centers, wherever people go to engage in exercise. So the first hypothesis is looking at how exercise motivation can predict exercise identity. Um, they're pretty looking, they're looking at this as a between subject uh, hypothesis and a within subject hypothesis. Both hypotheses are suggested that um, if individuals begin with an adaptive form of motivation, that their exercise identity should stay relatively high over time. On the other hand, if individuals have a non-adaptive form of motivation, that maybe their exercise identity will be pretty low throughout the study. And they're pretty much looking at that uh, for both the within subjects as well. For hypothesis two now, we just have the variables uh, flipped. We're looking at how identity now can predict motivation. So for example, does a high identity predict more adaptive forms of motivation over time? Or does a low identity predict more non-adaptive forms of motivation over time? And both of these are looked at from the between and within subjects. Now the analysis. This analysis uh, used M plus statistical software and performed multi-level growth curve modeling. They used a full information maximum likelihood estimator and the primary reason why they chose uh, multi-level growth curve modeling is for number one, they want to look at those individual differences, which is part of their within subject hypotheses. But at the same time, they're putting a huge emphasis on time here and they want to measure time as a continuous variable. Some of the other reasons why it seems like they're using multi-level growth curve modeling, which were not particularly stated within the article is that they don't have a relatively large sample. They only have 180 individuals and there is missing data within their sample. What we know about multi-level growth curve modeling is that it can be relatively flexible when uh, there's some issues dealing with sample size and missing data. Um, but also when it comes to the time frame the study took part in, uh, the times aren't equally spaced meaning there was one that was collected month one, month three, and then month six. So the results, um, the way I'll be presenting these results is in four parts. First, I'll explain the intra-class correlation coefficients. Then I'll go into the, a univariate multi-level growth curve model. And then I'll go into the two main hypotheses. They pretty much did two preliminary analyses before exploring their main hypotheses on how motivation predicts identity and how identity can predict motivation. So the intra-class correlation coefficient. This was done at time one in the study and it is really looking at the amount of variability between the three non-adaptive types of motivation the two adaptive types of motivation, and then the two forms of identity. And what they're pretty much showing at a between individual level, that there is quite a bit of variability taking place between the forms of motivation. We could see here for a motivation and external regulation, they're pretty low in this sample, which would make sense because they're measuring individuals who are already going to gyms and fitness centers. On the other hand, there is a non-adaptive form of motivation, which is introjected uh, regulation, which is relatively high. And it is just as high as the adaptive forms of motivation. And what is really interesting is when it comes to the identities, they have a high rate of variability amongst the sample. So the next part of the results is a univariate MGM multi-level growth curve model. Here, they wanted to look at general change across the entire study. So the first thing they did was look at the intercepts for these variables. And of course, the intercepts are being compared to zero. So you could see with all the intercepts at time point one, they are all significant, suggesting that 
uh, when doing a general measurement across all these variables in this study, they're all significantly different than zero, which would make sense. Now the slope, and this is actually a pretty important thing to report right at the get-go. What they're showing is over the three time points from the intercept, we actually see the non-adaptive forms of motivation actually decreasing over time, and that being significant. Whereas the um, adaptive forms of motivation are actually increasing, and so is identity as well. So we have non-adaptive decreasing over six months, whereas the adaptive forms are increasing. And here, I just wanted to put together a quick visual just to show the way I'm depicting the results and to provide a bit more of a layout to the way I see it fit. So we have these non-adaptive forms of motivation decreasing over time, whereas the adaptive form are increasing, and so is identity as well. Now we're looking at the random effects for the univariate MGM, looking at those differences between individuals what seems to happen though, which is pretty interesting, is that the two forms of A motivation and external regulation are not significant from the intercept. They're very low. On the other hand, we have once again, interjected, identified, intrinsic, and the identities all significantly different from the intercept. And now when it comes to the random effect slope, we have all these variables not significantly changing from their intercepts pretty much. And these slopes are pretty much not changing over the six month period. And you can see with the values here, they are very small. So from a visual standpoint, this is the way I interpret it. We have those low levels of non-adaptive motivation, the A motivation and external uh, motivation or regulation, which are very low and do not change. On the other hand, the interjected, the intrinsic, and the identified, they are significantly different from the intercept, but do not seem to change overall very much. And so goes for the identity as well. Now to go to the first hypothesis, looking at how motivation can predict identity. So to quickly recap, we're looking at how adaptive motivation can increase identity over time and how non-adaptive motivation can decrease identity over time. And we're going to look at it as a between and within subjects. So for the between subjects, we want to look at how motivation can increase identity over time. And what do we see? We see something pretty interesting here. We see that external regulation um, does have at the intercept a pretty high value when it comes to exercise beliefs. And then of course, we have identified regulation um, also having some relation with exercise beliefs and then intrinsic motivation being the only adaptive uh, motivation to have some role with identity. Now for the slopes, and this is where it's pretty interesting. What we see here is at a between subject level, um, none of the slopes are significantly different from the intercepts. So for example, if we were to draw this out, the way I see it here is that we have the uh, one adaptive form of motivation, or really two of them, because we had the identified and intrinsic that seemed to have some predictive power with beliefs and role identity, but it was really that external regulation that had a strong um, intercept with beliefs, but these things do not change over time. And what this pretty much says from a quick interpretation is that some forms of motivation right at the get-go seem to have a very high level of belief associated with them. Um, and if those motivations don't really seem to change over time, neither do the exercise beliefs. Now for the within subjects. Um, so now we're looking at individual variability amongst these three, amongst these five motivations and their forms of identity. So what we have here is that interjected regulation has a, a significant relationship with beliefs, and then so do the two adaptive forms of motivation. And of course, it is only intrinsic motivation that has some significant relationship with role identity. So what's pretty much happening here is a bit of a result that was showing in the univariate analysis is that the two forms of adaptive motivation 
do seem to increase role uh, beliefs in exercise uh, seem to increase exercise beliefs and the one can increase role identity on the other hand we do have that one non-adaptive form of motivation the interjected regulation that also seems to have that power as well now for hypothesis two looking at exercise identity and how it can predict exercise motivation just as a recap, we're looking at how identity, uh, how an increased identity can uh, alter motivation over time to being more adaptive, whereas a decreased identity may alter motivation to be less adaptive. And we're looking at that as a between and within subjects. So for the between subjects intercept, we have a negative uh, value attached to exercise beliefs and a motivation, which would make sense. These individuals are not really motivated to take part in exercising and have a bit of a negative view on exercising in general. Then when we look at the interjected regulation, we have now um, uh, a significant intercept with exercise beliefs and another significant intercept with role identity. And then, of course, when it comes to the two adaptive forms of motivation, they are both significant with um, exercise beliefs, but not role identity. Now, looking at the slopes, we can see that exercise beliefs and a motivation is still significant, and it's actually a bit positive, which is interesting. Now, when it comes to interjected regulation, we have a bit of a negative decrease in interjected regulation with exercise beliefs, but now a positive relationship with role identity. So over time, it seems that this type of non-adaptive form of motivation can actually increase identity as well. And then when it comes to identified regulation and intrinsic motivation, identified regulation does not change much from the intercept. And what is interesting is intrinsic motivation seems to minorly decrease over time as well. And this is just a quick visual on the way I interpret these results. When it comes to the exercise beliefs, we do have some non-adaptive forms of motivation decreasing over time, but really their intercepts are high and they were much higher than the non-adaptive forms of motivation. So what this sort of suggests is that these individuals scored very high and didn't really have much room to change over time as well based on the rating scales they used. Of course now, when it comes to role identity, we do have that interjected motivation that does seem to increase identity over time, whereas the other two forms of adaptive motivation seem to be relatively stable with identity. Now for the within subjects, looking at that individual variability. There's no significant difference for the two non-adaptive forms of motivation, but for interjected regulation, we do have a significant intercept between that and exercise beliefs. Now, when it comes to the adaptive forms of motivation, we have um, a significant relationship with exercise beliefs and intrinsic motivation. And that's pretty much the way this is looking. Exercise beliefs seem to increase over or exercise beliefs seem to increase certain types of motivation over time, the two adaptive and the one non-adaptive, but your role identity doesn't really seem to change any of these things over time. These intercepts should actually be all lower than they actually are as well because they weren't significant. So in conclusion, uh, they're pretty much showing that there is a reciprocal relationship between exercise identity and exercise motivation. Um, higher motivation does seem to increase identity and a higher identity also seems to increase motivation. This was found at the between and within subjects level. But what is interesting is it's not completely clear cut. Yes, we have an increase in two adaptive forms of motivation, but that interjected regulation also seemed to be uh, very much tied to role identity. Not as much exercise beliefs, but role identity. So in conclusion, one of the main findings is that intrinsic motivation had a high role identity and exercise beliefs. There was a moment where there was a slight decrease over time, but what the authors are suggesting is because they scored motivation so high and they scored their identity and exercise beliefs so high, is that there was no real room for, uh, for increase. It really, the most that it could do was go down, which it did.
Um, on the other hand, there was an interesting result for a motivation. Those who are not motivated to take part in exercise had high exercise beliefs, but not high exercise beliefs in the way you would think. Their beliefs are pretty much fixed on not interested in exercising. So it's really the opposite. It's like a high negative exercise belief. And without motivation changing over time, their exercise beliefs aren't going to change over time. And pretty much what the authors, authors suggest of this study is that if you really want to show the benefits of physical activity or show the benefits in, in one's beliefs, it really comes down to changes in motivation. Hopefully those who are A-motivated can find some enjoyment in the activity to either develop an adaptive form of motivation to increase those exercise beliefs and potential role identity. But other than that, um, some of these non-adaptive forms of motivation did not seem to have any benefit towards exercise beliefs or role identity. We do see that unique result with interjected regulation, whereas it did have some effect with role identity and exercise beliefs, um, but that was pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.